Thanks very much. And, uh, good morning, uh, ladies and thank you very much, Pam. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, pleasure to see you so many people's faces I know. And uh, I've never quite seen a clutch of planners like that in my life before. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, quite impressive. Um, I, I will not uh, spend a lot of time because much of uh, the argument I would make, and I think most people would make, uh, have been made already so beautifully by Paul and by Sheldon. I would like to uh, underscore, I say underscore because they've said it so well, but underscore three significant things about what is being discussed. First of all, let me just talk about the impact of the changes that are being proposed. Um, it, it's, uh, it was done so well by Paul in understanding exactly where we've been, where we think we're going, what some people are saying, and what will be the impact, that I won't spend much time. But like Paul, uh, I uh, paid attention to the Embarca, Embarcadero uh, uh, Expressway when it fell. And I happened to be uh, in, the, in the neighborhood, went over to, shortly after and talked to some planners. And at that time, they were talking about the debate they were about to have. And that debate was about not just about the road and its falling down and its costs and so on, but what it was going to, was going to mean to people's understanding of San Francisco, in San Francisco, and around the world it was a major part. They did a study even through the UCLA. Uh, UCLA did a study on the consequences of it after they had an opportunity to assess the impact. And it said this at the end. The boulevard that we put in place was a form of urban reprioritization that gave emphasis to life and neighborhood quality and has yielded net positive benefits without seriously affecting transportation. People should bear that in mind. At the end of the day, that is what they found. And not only will we find it, but as Paul pointed out, or, or Paul pointed out, uh, around the world, people have found this. That's the impact. The impact, all the fears about traffic and congestion, God knows we all understand the the impact of traffic congestion. All those fears of funding it worse have not been found to be true. The second thing about the impact <coughs> is that the, in the debate so far, where I've heard other people speak, they, they talk dispar disparagingly, dispar disparagingly about the, the, the boulevard option. They sort of dismiss it. Uh, my goodness, why? this is such an opportunity. The question of the design of the boulevard that we will have along the waterfront is absolutely an opportunity to be grasped. They've done it, I mean, to, to dismiss it is to dismiss the Champs Elysees. <laughs> I mean, to dismiss it is to go to other places and see what you can do with that amount of space. If you go, if you go to the, uh, uh, to the uh, East, uh, East Parkway uh, Expressway up, up, in, uh, up in Brooklyn, in New York, they not only turn it into six lanes, but also they have bike and pedestrian and parking and the rest of it. The opportunity to actually do something dramatic on the waterfront through the design of that boulevard is one of the great impacts that no one, or very few, are, seem to understand the possibilities that we are now going to face it and take that, little, that, that, uh, that road down. The second thing I'd like to underscore is that this is a question of money. It's all, local government is always about money. Where do you get it? How do we get it? How do you spend it? What are the choices? You judge governments by the priorities that they choose. And the priorities that we've got, the choices that we've got when it comes to the money, is pretty clear. I spent a lifetime almost saying we should take down the gardener. And people come back and say, Nice for you, David, but it costs money. Costs too much money. Here we are now, with the opportunity to complete the job that we started a few years ago, to take down this portion of the garden, and for double the money, people want to rebuild it. It's beyond <laughs> comprehension. It's beyond belief. So the idea that somehow before you shouldn't do it because it, it costs too much money, you're now seeing the reality of the lack of truth in that argument. Because for double the money, some people still want to build and rebuild the garden. And we could, on the money, we could actually now take, take the money, 
You say, where would we put it? Paul pointed this out. This city has a, at least a number of issues, but two for sure, and that's transit and affordable housing. And, and even the proposal to keep it up is going to not only not help affordable housing, it's going to impact at least the, the stuff we're already planning along, uh, along the Keating Channel. So it is about the money, it's about the choices, and both of those lead to taking it down. And finally, it is no mystery to anybody. These, same, these major choices that we make uh, in the history of the city always tell us an essential truth, and that is, what's our vision of the future of the city? So I'm here, and the others are here, and many others will come to say to those who who to be making the decision in council. This is an issue of a symbol that will tell us where this council wants to take this city. And I contend that rebuilding the elevated Gardner Expressway of 60 years ago is building the city for yesterday. Taking it down and putting our imagination and effort into designing the the wonderful opportunity we've got uh, for, the, for a, a new road that takes us to the Don Valley. That is a plan we could have for the future, and I should, certainly hope that they accept Paul's advice, get all the information, but for heaven's sakes, Council, draft the future, not the past.